Okay, welcome back. It's time for um, working with pink foam again. Uh, this time we're going to be focusing on some Arctic scatter terrain. So I'm going to create, uh, I have, again, just these were scraps of pink foam that were from a much bigger commission project. And uh, I texturized the edges with a hot wire. Um, if you don't have a hot wire thing, there are a lot of ways to achieve different textures with pink foam, like, for example, just cutting with a knife. And then if you want to smooth it out, you could take like cheap, nail polish remover from the dollar store and gently just brush little bits of it on. Don't go real heavy with that though because it melts the foam and if you go too heavy you're going to create like just a completely melted piece. So um, but anyway um, these pieces are kind of cut out to represent space on the table and the way I envision this working is you know say you have like a, a scenario where you've got you know a snowy arctic tundra camp you know terrain i could have a few of these kind of major pieces here um, scattered across and maybe you know between these two ridges there's this ice wall and you know they have to cross it or something you know like that or you know you could just have these kind of scattered in different places i've got these little kind of um, curve pieces that could just represent you know little bluffs and little snow stuff. Um, so I don't know really how it's going to work, but the idea is similar to the rocky mountainous terrain that we did in the previous series, um, which still looks pretty darn good. Um, but the, the idea is just to create something more for um, like a frozen wasteland and tundra. So the idea being kind of these snowy rocky out, outcroppings. Um, now with this, I am, I'm not looking at basing these in black. I don't want to work from dark to light. What I want to do is base them in white because I, I see them as being kind of ice. And then we're going to do a second layer over the white of like just parts uh, of areas that maybe might be a little darker of a blue um, and not real heavy, just almost like um, half coverage. So not quite as light as like a highlight or um, dry brush coat, but just kind of like half coverage of blue in these ridges to kind of pick up some of the texture. And then um, after that, we'll do highlights over that with white. So it, instead of just straight up going white across the board, what I'm gonna do is start off with um, what I highlighted the last piece, which, with, which is the granite gray. So it's a very light gray color. Um, and it dries almost like a white, like a grayish white. So on one of these pieces, I'm just gonna experiment with base coating using this gray. On another, I'm gonna base coat with a white. And on the last one, I'm gonna base coat with this blue. And then we'll let it dry and we'll see what it looks like. So this is truly an experiment. Um, I'm not gonna be making a lot of significant edits so that we could learn during this process together. So. I think I'm gonna start off with this gray. So as usual, got a crappy brush um, because this isn't painting minis, it's painting terrain. I'm gonna make sure the brush is wet, but then I'm also gonna kind of blot that wetness off a little bit. Give my paint a little shake, and then I'm going to apply this gray in there. Stir it up a little bit so it's got some water to water it down so that it can seep in between all those little cool textures and crevices um, that were created with the hot wire. So I'm gonna start off with this piece because it's got a lot of interesting texture and um, see where we can go with this. So I'm going pretty heavy because again, this is a base coat. So I'm gonna paint left and right as well as up and down because I want this to get in those cracks. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and do this all across really thoroughly on the sides. I'm not too worried about the top or the bottom yet. I just wanna make sure that all of my texture gets this initial coat. And I'll just brush that in. And I'm going kind of across for initial coverage, but then I'm also going vertically to brush it into all those cool little nooks and crannies. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, so how's your day been? Mine's been pretty busy. Life has been pretty busy. Um, 
So haven't had time to play any games recently. And I know some of you out there um, might be crafters who build stuff and don't have a group to play with. And I feel you. For a long time, I was without group. Um, just all my regular gaming friends kind of moved on from that world. And so for a long time, I was, you know, without a group. But, you know, things work out a certain way. And then I was able to find a group of people, like-minded individuals who enjoyed the path of gaming. And so we, we connected. And now I have too many games and not enough time to play them all. So you never know where, where life's going to take you. Okay, so again, this is a base coat, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to fill in all the cracks. So I'm going around the edges first with the heaviest part of this coat. And uh, remember that with terrain painting, you really, I don't want to say you can't fail, you can't mess up, but almost every failure can actually be covered up in some way, shape, or form with, with just an additional coat of paint. Oftentimes, that's all you need. All right, while I'm here, I'm just going to paint the bottom out. And again, I might not come back to this bottom at all. Uh, I suppose the way that these are designed, they could be re reversible. And you could certainly do that with your own projects. Um, but I'm, I'm just kind of getting in on this piece, and I'm, I'm liking what I see so far. It's a very flat, gray, stony texture, which is good as an initial base coat. I dig it. I like it. Okay, so that guy is done. I'm just going to let him dry over here. All right, now this second one, uh, I'm going to infuse some blue. So this is Apple Barrel Pool Blue. This is like uh, supposed to be a watery blue. So I'm going to infuse some of this blue into my gray mix. I really want to get, I don't know, I've never done this before, people. We're, we're experimenting. So... If I practice what I preach, then I can't mess it up. It's just sometimes the coolest discoveries are the things that we just tried out. Sometimes it fails, sometimes it succeeds. So I've, I've modeled up this blue with whatever was left from my gray, and now I'm going to apply that to this next piece. Um, hmm. I don't know what to make of that so far. It's... Uh, it's definitely more gray than blue. Maybe that's a good thing. I don't know. But again, this is just the base coat. It's an undercoat. So I, I'm going to brush over this anyway. We know this, right? We know that we're going to hit more coats of paint over this guy. Worst case scenario, if it just sucks, we'll just whitewash the whole thing, right? No big deal. And then it'll just be another icy, snowy outcropping. But it might be cool to see some lurking color tones underneath this. So we we shall see. Now, if you're watching closely, you might be like, Bill, you're, you're balancing these chunks on that other big chunk. Won't that taint it and mess it up? No, not really, because I'm going to overcoat those with white anyway. So it's all good, peeps. It's all good. Now, I have run out of this uh, gray-blue concoction. So what does that mean? Well, it doesn't mean jack squat. It just means I'll add some more. And if I missed a spot, again, no big deal. I'm going for coverage here, so I'm going to spread in what's left and then call this guy good. Yes, use that up. This almost looks like a wood shim. So I'll put those side by side so you, you can see. Um, maybe you could see the blue and the gray. I mean, when they're right next to each other, you can definitely see the difference. Definitely. All right, now, I'm going to wash this out, um, get that all cleaned out of there as much as possible, and um, get that brush wiped off. All right, so for this piece, I'm going to skip the gray and the blue. I'm just going to go straight with the white. So um, apple barrel white is fine, or if you have any leftover crap paint like I do. I don't even know if I could use that because I think it's dried out. So I'm going to go back to my apple barrel. This is called Snow White. Rather appropriate since I'm going for a um, snowy feel. So these are cheap paints, um, cheap acrylic paints from Walmart. 
you can support whoever you want to buy paint from, but I bought these from Walmart because they're like 50 cents a tube. The ones that I go through the most seem to be like the, the families of grays and browns and blacks because so much of the terrain kind of follows those tones. I guess some greens in there too. So this is not necessarily a pure white because my brush was still a little dirty, but I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm going to keep going, get this piece all snowed up with its white base coat, Let's see where we can go from here. I like it, I'll say, but you know, the thing about basing in white is that now you're not working from dark to light. That rhymed, not intentionally, of course, it's just because that's how I roll. Um, so I don't know how we're going to enhance this piece, but I guess it's just a different attempt. So we'll go white and then maybe we'll, we'll dry brush blue or gray over the white and see how that looks. So just kind of working in the opposite direction. Yes. Now, a uh, couple things. I have not textured the tops of these. So some of the standard texturing technique would include rolling like stones or rocks or chunks of concrete across the top or um, rolling up uh, some aluminum foil and kind of rolling that across the texture. I have not done that um, on purpose with these pieces because I wanted the tops to be smooth and slick and slippery and icy instead of rough and trained. Now, I might change my mind after all this is done, which means I just get some more pink foam, carve it out, cut it up, and um, see where we go from there. All right, so we have three different bases. We've got this blue, we've got the gray, and we've got the white. Now, it's all still wet, so I can't really work with another color quite yet. Um, and I don't know which one I like, so I don't want to proceed to these really big, long curve pieces um, or these little pieces yet. So I'm going to let those dry and then we'll come back when they're dry and we'll start doing the next layer. All right. Thanks for watching that video. Make sure that you like and subscribe and don't forget to check out a lot of the other great content that I have on the channel. It's really awesome. You should check it out. I know what I'm talking about.